What's the most useful thing I could share with your audience that I've learned like in the last seven years since we last spoke? The thing that's made the biggest difference in my life, a superpower, a, a big, huge change. So to me, it's been, in short, skepticism. So if you wonder why I'm so happy, why I'm thriving, why I seem to be doing well, to me, it's a lot of my happiness comes from this worldview that is radical doubt. It's skepticism. And so I'm going to give this the shorthand of calling it useful, not true, but it, the visual for it is that moment at the end of the Matrix movie when Neo realizes, like, those aren't bullets. This is just code. Mm -hmm. Remember all the bullets come yes. his way? He's like, oh, wait, right. Like, none of these rules apply to me. Mm -hmm. That's deep skepticism. It's empowering. It's liberating. And so what I'm going to do for a few minutes, mm -hmm. including a little stories, is to play Morpheus <laughs> to help emancipate <laughs> the listeners. So yes, I call this useful, not true. But preach, goes, preach. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> Number one. So, okay, I'm going to tell you the four bits first, and we'll use that to kind of make sure that we come back to this. So, like, number one, almost nothing is objectively true. Mm -hmm. Number two, beliefs are placebos. So you got to believe whatever works for you now. Number three, rules and norms are arbitrary games that can be changed. I'm preaching with converted, mm -hmm. that one. And number four, refuse ideology. You need to accept ideas individually. There's okay. the structure. So number one, so almost nothing is objectively true. So here's what's true. My hand is on the table. Mm -hmm. But what's not true is it's good to do everything in moderation. Here's what's not true. Family is everything. Here's what's not true. My mother abandoned me. Here's what's not true. AI is the future. So all of these things... People say them as if they're true. Or even when people make an excuse like, you know, I would be more successful if it weren't for my family, you know, or my location or whatever. People say these things as if they're an indisputably true fact. But to me, the only thing that's true are the things that both a cat and an alien, or let's say a cat <laughs> and an octopus, would agree on. You've if come up with so many children's books ideas in this conversation. <laughs> the right. cat and the, the alien. The cat, the alien, and the octopus. Because... It makes you realize that everything else is just mental interpretation, right? Like, there we go. This is on the table. This is true. Yeah. But everything else, including, watch well, this one. Am I flipping you off right now? Like, am I angry at you right now? Just give me the middle finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah sorry. This is, yeah. I'm holding up my middle finger with the back of my palm towards Tim. Even if people say things like, I hate you, mm -hmm. does it mean that they hate you? No, it just... They said three words. That's all that actually happened. Mm -hmm. Their mouth said these words. Everything else is an interpretation or a projection, mm -hmm. right? So we have to consider why people are saying these things. If you start to think why they said something, it helps to dispel it. Mm -hmm. You can say, oh, you know what? They're probably just believing whatever supports the emotions that they want to feel right now, right? So if somebody has a belief that family is everything, Maybe that was something they told their kids because they want their kids to take care of them when they're older. So mm -hmm. they want their kids to believe that family's everything. But they have a self-serving reason to believe that. Yeah, possibly so, subconscious, right? Right, right. Mm -hmm. Oh, so I'm so glad you said this. Have you heard about the split brain stories that people... Yes. Okay. Why did you get up to have a glass of water? That type oh! of stuff. Can, can I yeah, tell please. it? please. <laughs> yeah. So this is so important to understand. These are crazy. So bananas. And we'll start with the other one, since you know that one. There well, was no, 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 but the audience doesn't come on. No, 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 but we'll do both. But during brain surgery, the patient needs to stay awake. In some, yeah. And so there was a woman, I don't know the details of this, it was on Econ Talk mm -hmm. podcast. During brain surgery, they were poking around in there, and suddenly the woman started laughing. The patient started mm -hmm. laughing, and they asked, why are you laughing? And she said, like, oh, well, it's just, it's really funny the way that that curtain is hanging. And she really thought that the reason she was laughing is because that's the way the curtain was hanging. But yep. it was actually because they were poking them. Stimulating part of the brain. Right there. Yeah. And so the split brain patients, there's some people whose left and right hemispheres of their brain are not connected. So they've done tests on these people to say into their right ear, please get up and open the window. And they'll get up and open the window. And then they'll ask their left ear, or maybe it's their eye, why did you open the window? And they'll say, oh, it was just a, it was a little cold in here. I hope you don't mind. And they really sincerely to the core thought that's the reason they opened the window. Yeah. And 
there are a couple more examples of this, you know, mm-hmm. a, a message shown to one eye and they did something, then they asked the other eye, why did you do that? And every time the people make up a reason, yeah. they don't know they're making it up. They give a reason why they did that. And they feel completely confident that that is the reason why they did it. Yeah. So to me, this is the most beautiful example. Like we actually don't know. Mm-hmm. So talk about deep skepticism, mm-hmm. radical doubt. You shouldn't even believe anything you tell yourself, even in your private diary, when you're saying, I'm not happy in this location, or I can't do this because of that, or I'm mad at so-and-so. You need to ask yourself, like, okay, that might not be true. Just Mm -hmm. because I'm saying it, it might not be true. So, number two, beliefs are placebos. So, two people in the same boat, one can say, this sucks, and another one can say, this is great. Mm -hmm. But neither one is true. No beliefs are true. In fact, you know the, the little story of Richard Branson before there was Virgin Airlines. You've heard the tale that like he was at an airport and the, a flight to somewhere was canceled. Right, it was delayed. And yeah, and, and everybody was grumbling, ah, this sucks. And yeah. so he kind of went to the 20 people that were angry and said, hey, if I charter a plane, will you guys split the cost? And I said, yeah. So everybody else was angry. He looked at the same situation and said, this is great. Mm-hmm. And he, you know, that was kind of the, the launch of Virgin Air. No, not launch. You know what I mean? A predecessor. The Genesis story. Genesis. Nice word. <laughs> so no beliefs are true. When we say, I believe, it's an indicator that what we're about to say next is not true. Or not evidence-based. Right? Not true. <laughs> Sorry. Mm-hmm. I'm just, I'm just, yeah. yeah. Having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun. Yeah. Not evidence-based. Yeah. Because... We don't say I believe in potatoes because <laughs> speak for yourself. We don't have to <laughs> because there's a potato. We don't need to say it because yeah, there right. it is. It exists. Mm. So I think that whenever we say I believe such and such, mm. it indicates that whatever we say next is not true. It's kind of like when science is at the end of a field's name. Generally, it's not science. Not always, but very often that's oh. not the case. I can think of a few exceptions, neuroscience, computer science, but very often when science gets appended to something, it's like, ooh, thou doth protest too much. (laughs) I like that. Yeah. So, since no beliefs are true, I think this is liberating to realize that you can just choose whatever belief works for you now that Mm -hmm. helps you be who you want to be. Mm -hmm. This is like, this is about personal empowerment. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit hacking yourself. If a certain belief will help you be who you want to be, Right now, you don't need to keep believing it tomorrow. You could believe it for three minutes or three days or, you know, the rest of your life. You're going to find what you look for. So if you choose to believe something, you'll find evidence to support your belief Mm -hmm. of anything, right? So the number three is that rules and norms are arbitrary games. So this is the one where I can't help but think of, you know, your introduction to the world in four-hour work week, giving so many wonderful examples of how you don't have to accept the world's norms. Yep. You know, for sure. But it's funny how many times the rules of the world are stated as if they're absolutely true. Like all applicants must submit their application through the usual channels and wait to hear from us. Mm -hmm. Or to be an expert in your field, you should have an advanced degree from a university. But someone made up these rules and most people follow those rules, but they're not true. They're just not absolutely true. So I think that realizing they're not true, gives you an incredible advantage Mm -hmm. because you realize you can make up the rules. So this is that matrix moment where the bullets are flying out and he goes, wait a minute, this is just code. Yeah. Somebody made this up, but I don't need to run this program. 